welcome. Today, I thought we could go through some fall recipes and write down the things we want to make for the season. What do you think? and a piece of paper pad here so we can write down any ideas we like okay so this is by Better Homes and Gardens and there are new must make quick breads apples hot ciders donuts brown butter bars ooh that sounds good hearty autumn soups and pumpkin sweet and savory so a lot of delectable looking items immediately I see lots of bread so. looks like they put the of contents over some soup or fondue. It actually looks like fondue. Have you ever made fondue? I actually have a machine that makes fondue. It was gifted to me. It was more like a hand-me-down versus like a proper gift, but I have yet to ever use it, so maybe I should pull it out for the season. I think I'm just nervous about how to make it. So it looks like immediately we have fall's favorite fruit. Fall is the prime time for apples to shine when they're freshly picked, super juicy, and packed with flavor. These sweet and savory recipes give the autumn beauties a starring role. Have you ever gone apple picking? Mm. I have never been apple picking. I'm not sure I'd be up for it. <laughs> I'm more of a eat an apple in an apple pie kind of gal. Rarely do I find fresh apples appetizing, but I think that's just because I prefer berries instead as fruits. Or peaches. Peaches are probably my favorite. So here we have a savory dish, chicken apple burgers. It includes bacon, onion, garlic, Apple brandy, that's great. Apple brandy. Obviously, some Granny Smith apple, parsley, sage, ground chicken, and pretzel buns, which are a great bun option. Would you be interested? Okay, you want to skip? Wow. Fluffy crumb in this cake. Avoid using apple butter with added pectin. I've never heard of that word. We tested this recipe with half a cup of our apple butter and had good results. Mm. So it looks like this is a caramel apple poke cake and the recipe is on page 8. So we'll probably come up to that soon. But over here we have apple butter. That's quite a task. It looks like it takes about an hour and 50 minutes, but you can freeze it for up to six months if you want to look at it that way. And then you also have spiced applesauce. What do you think? Not really. Okay. Oh, okay. Marbled caramel apples. Ooh, this has apples, vanilla caramels, heavy cream, chocolate flavored candy coating. Ooh, that sounds good. What do you think? Okay, we'll write that one down. Marbled caramel apples. Okay. And then this is the poke cake that we saw earlier. Wow, it's only a 25 minute prep and you bake for 40 minutes. Not too bad. 
you want to try that, I want out. It did look delicious, in my humble opinion. Cake. I think it's fun to try out new recipes and some delicious things. You just never know if it'll come out right, you know? Bake or air fry. These look like spiced cider donuts, which we'll see the recipe soon. What do you think so far? They look really good. Fruit stuffed pork roast. I mean, that sounds good in theory. I'm not a huge fan of stuffed things, you know? Stuffed meats, I just I'm okay with the meat by itself. What do you think? You're good? Okay. Apple brown butter bars. Okay, I definitely want to write this one down. Look at how beautiful that is. It has brown sugar, almonds, butter, cinnamon, allspice, sugar, heavy cream, almond paste. And of course, apples. Sometimes I love to make these things, but I'm like, how am I gonna find almond paste, you know? I guess I could look it up, but I'll write it down. Apple brown butter bars. Okay, and then there's the spiced cider donuts over here. And I'm assuming this is your staple you know, donut recipe. There's cardamom in it, apple, apple cider, apple juice, lots of apple, etc. It does take about an hour to, and 45 minutes to rise, though. What do you think? Maybe on like a special baking day we can do it. Okay. Okay, spiced cider. that one down. Next we have four ways with hot apple cider. You know, I wish I was on the train, on the wagon, if you will, of people who love hot apple cider, but it's a little hard to get behind, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Maybe because it reminds me of like hot lemon tea a lot of the time, which reminds me of being sick, so it's a little difficult. I think it's still tasty in its own way, and especially on a very cold, crisp day. The quintessential fall beverage takes on new layers of deliciousness by stirring in wine, tea, pomegranate juice, and more. Oh, that's interesting. What do you think? Hot spiced apple cider, cinnamon sticks, whole cloves, apple spice, apple cider, fresh lemon juice, and a brandy and freshly grated nutmeg with apple slices and you can even slow cook it which is nice you want to try that okay okay so spiced apple cider this is like a alcoholic version sauvignon interesting oh there's more okay Earl Grey, Cider Toddy, there's hot pomegranate, pomegranate, there's hot pomegranate cider and warm apple pie cider. Oh, this looks nice. I could do for that. I think I like it because it's got some crumbles on top. Uh, next we have Pumpkins aren't the only winter squash hitting peak season this time of year. Squash. Here are five unexpected ways to give our favorite autumn beauties the attention they deserve. Ooh, crostini with delicata squash butter. I love a good crostini. I don't know about anyone else, but I'm all for it. Anything on a little piece of bread is what I'm down for. Interesting. Here we have roasted butternut burrito bowls. Okay, that's a little interesting. Yeah. And then butternut feta galette. That looks really interesting. What do we think? Okay. Long. The 
This is the crostini recipe. Wanna turn that okay? Crostini. And then we have warm spiced acorn squashes. Next, we have spaghetti squash shrimp scampi bowls. That looks tasty. You want to try that? Okay. I'm not a huge fan, but if you want it, why not? You know? Gotta compromise. Not a huge fan of shrimp, personally, but I wish I liked it. I really do. It's a texture thing, unfortunately. Okay. Sweet potato. This fall, let's give thanks for the humble sweet potato. This versatile veggie can be used in all sorts of savory, citrusy, and yes, sweet little ways. The sweet potato is very versatile. I'll give it that. Sweet tater tip. No matter how you prep them, sweet potatoes discolor quickly once cut. If you're not using them immediately, place them in cold water to prevent which I think goes for most potatoes, to be honest. This is a pomegranate glazed sweet potatoes. They look like fries. They look like curly fries. <laughs> um, let's see, this is sweet potato pineapple gratin. That looks really good. And a very unique side dish that, you know, hasn't been done before. Salt roasted sweet this looks really good. Wow. The bed of salt in the baking pan absorbs the moisture from the sweet potatoes and herbs. Then the sweet potatoes reabsorb the trapped moisture. Be sure to use coarse kosher salt or sea salt, which is easier to wipe off than fine grain table salt. It's literally like on a bed of salt. That's so interesting. Wow. I've never heard of that before. Here we have Asian style sweet potatoes. Okay. So out of the salt roasted sweets, pomegranate glazed sweet potatoes, sweet potato, pineapple gratin, and Asian style sweet potatoes, what would you like to try? The salt roasted, alright. Sweets. And the pineapple. of meat and veggies from the grill to the skillet. Learn our secrets for a richly caramelized crust, juicy interior, and perfect pan sauce. Wow. I've yet to use a cast iron skillet, but maybe someday. Orange sage squash. Mm. And this is ginger miso beef tenderloin steak. We have a lot of recipes to get them. And then here we have chipotle chicken breasts. Okay, let's get that. Next we have mustard shallot pork chops. What do you think? Okay. Pizza with capocolo and fennel. Did I say that right? <laughs> Looks good. What do you think? Doesn't take too long to put together. Mm, okay, let's get that. There's more pizza options. We have chicken basil alfredo spaghetti squash crust pizza. Wow, that was a mouthful. And then over here we have cheesy one-pot butternut spaghetti pie. 
That's a really interesting uh, take on using squash. Okay. Season for roasting and braising. We love a good braise. You know what I'm saying? Thai style chicken curry with basil and jasmine rice. Mmm. What do you think? chicken drumsticks and roasted red onions or I'm sorry tandoori <laughs> tandoori chicken yeah let's try that and then over here we have sheet pan sausage and fall vegetables down to try a salmon recipe. I feel like I have found some that are foolproof, but you can never go too wrong with another salmon recipe to try. Well, you could probably go wrong with it, but hopefully not, right? This over here is easy roasted broccoli with pecorino and lemon, and then we have a lazy braised maple glazed beef tenderloin with mushrooms. That sounds really good, to be honest. And this is a flash braised pork chops with apples and green. Yes. What do you think? Both? Alright. are its perfect partners in these cheesy comforts. And honestly, I think if we were going to do a party, fondue is such a good idea. You can have meats and cheeses and vegetables, and you could use um, even some fruits, depending on what you pair with, breads. I mean, there's just so much you can do, and I think it's a really cool party style food. And it looks like this is a cider cheese fondue. That's exciting. So we have cheesy Brussels sprouts and chorizo bake over here. Cider cheese fondue. Let's write that one down. Definitely want to try that. Cheese fondue. And then we have here turkey apple grilled cheese sandwiches. Honestly, I'm down to try that. Like, I'm not a huge huge, huge fan of apple, but a cool grilled cheese sounds pretty good right now. I might be a little hungry. <laughs> this is probably not a good thing to do right before dinner, you know, but I'm building up my appetite, I guess. It says cheese change up. You can use whatever kind of melting cheese you have on hand for this dressed up grilled cheese. Try Gouda, Swiss, Provolone, Fontina, or Havarti cheese in place of the white cheddar. Love that. Pumpkin cheddar cheese ball with sage. Wow. The quintessential pumpkin cheese ball. I love that. I wish I had a party to go to to make that. <laughs> um, roasted sweet potato bacon and mac and cheese. I'm always down for bacon mac and cheese. Like, honestly. Why not? A sweet potato is an interesting addition, but if it tastes good, I can get past 
the sweet potato. Next we have hot and bubbly artichoke dip. I love a good artichoke dip. It looks like they've paired it with sweet potatoes, chips essentially. And then here they have spicy roasted red pepper artichoke dip. Ooh. Let's try that one. We're gonna need to have a party or something. <laughs> People eat all this. Red pepper artichoke. Okay. Over here is a brown butter cauliflower artichoke. more artichoke dips. Oh goodness. Then we have chorizo poblano artichoke dip and Italian sausage artichoke dip. Ooh, that looks so good. I especially love the tomato edition. I love a good roasted tomato. Sweet Heart Pumpkin. Pumpkin season is back with nine recipes for you to swoon over. Go sweet or go savory with bubbly lasagna, crisp falafel, bourbon specked muffins, icebox cake, and more. Wow, that's a lot. Pumpkin Spice Icebox Cake. I've never heard of that before. It sounds delicious and easy. Ooh, I'm gonna write that down. Pumpkin spice icebox cake. It essentially has heavy cream, powdered sugar, vanilla, nutmeg, canned pumpkin, a cup, a cup of dulce de leche, thin ginger snap cookies, such as anise ginger thins and ground cinnamon. So, you probably soak up the cookies in like cream and all of that so it becomes like a cake. That makes sense. Sounds good. Pumpkin green chili taunt casserole. Oh, that looks so good. I mean, I'm kind of thrown with the pumpkin, but I mean, again, tater tots, you can't go wrong. Cinnamon sugar bourbon, bourbon pumpkin muffin. I'm not a huge fan of bourbon though, so I'm not sure. I know, I know. Baked CD with sausage and pumpkin tomato sauce. Well, that looks delicious. Again, there's a lot of pumpkin in, in these dishes. So I hope you like pumpkin. Um, this is rosemary pumpkin prosciutto focaccia. Focaccia, but that does take three hours. Yeah, maybe another time. You have a whole day to bake. <laughs> Roasted pumpkin hand pies. Okay, that sounds really good. Roasted pumpkin hand pies. I love a good hand. start a new page. Here we have pumpkin falafel. Ooh. Looks fresh. Looks tasty. Okay, then we have pumpkin bars with marcona almonds, butter, dark brown sugar, canned pumpkin, flour, nutmeg, allspice, pretty much all the good and then here we have a three cheese pumpkin lasagna. Do we want to try a pumpkin lasagna? I'm not sure. Okay. Elegant pears. Oh yeah, I think pears might be in season, yeah. Snacks. The kiddos are always starving the second they shed those backpacks. Here are six ready when they are munchies to hold them off until dinner. I don't know about the kids, but I know I like my snacks, so 
Parmesan Ranch Sweet Potato Snack Mix and Pumpkin Roasted Red Pepper Hummus. Wow. Sounds good. And here we have Sweet and Salty Scotcheroo. uses corn chips. That's interesting. Seasoned babitas and peanuts. I feel like nuts, you know? Okay, here we have crispy apple chips. And here we have bacon, turkey, cranberry roll-ups. That actually doesn't sound bad. Bacon, turkey, cranberry roll-ups. In season soups, now this is my jam. We have carrot soup with tarragon and cream. And then here we have chipotle chicken squash chili. Spicy sausage and colored soup. Ooh. Here we have smoky cauliflower cheese soup, which also looks good because it has bacon on it. That is the secret. And then creamy wild rice mushroom soup. I'm not a huge fan of mushrooms. I think I like mushrooms in...
pumpkin seeds. Hmm, I didn't know that. Carrot cake quick bread. Also sold. I will totally write that down. Carrot cake sounds amazing. And these are quick, apparently. I mean, this still takes, I mean, 55 minutes to bake, but that's not unlike other, you know, like a banana bread would take them out the same amount of time. Ooh, this looks great. Oh, I'm gonna have to try and make this. Sweet finish. Caramelized pear skillet cake. The intoxicating smell of nutty brown butter is reason alone to bake these cookie cups. Brown butter snickerdoodle cookie cups. I mean, that sounds delicious in my book. Okay. Did I skip them? This looks like, oh, this is a sweet potato chocolate pound cake. Yeah. What do we think? We should do the snickerdoodle cups. You know, along with the 50 other recipes we wrote down. Where's the other one? Okay, I think it's on this page. And the caramelized pear skillet cake. And then we have maple cheesecake bars with vanilla cream whipped cream. Or vanilla bean whipped cream. What do we think? We have enough. I mean, we can always come back to it. That's the beauty of the magazine. It's here for when we need it. But yeah, it looks like we wrapped up. we want to make. So, let's be sure to narrow down our favorites and actually bake them, <laughs> go through with them. But I uh, look forward to tasting all the tasty recipes we try this season, and hopefully we find some new tasty, delicious uh, dishes that we can enjoy and share with others. After all, it's comfort season, right? Okay, well, thanks so much for going through this with me. How about we take a break? Right? Okay. Yes, hopefully I haven't made you too hungry, but uh, thanks again for going through this with me. And I hope we get to do it again soon.